All right, everybody. Hello, my name is Raquel Martinez, and I just want to thank you for joining us here for School to Home presentation. This is Module 5, Digital Citizenship, and this is my partner, Victoria Ayala. Thank you for being here. So we're going to go to the next slide. <laughs> so what is digital citizenship? It's a way of thinking, being, and acting online. How do we keep students motivated? So we establish a structure and routine. And remember, this is stuff that we went over in module one. Mm -hmm. um, praise efforts, break up the day, check in regularly, and be willing to experiment and adjust to expectations. Even though we already went through these things on, in module one, it's always and a three. great, and three, sorry. It is always a great reminder, and it's just great things to always come back to because sometimes we forget, especially with how busy we are in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, uh, with School to Home, what we like to do in each of our trainings is reinforce what we have already taught you about. So hopefully this will take it one step further for you. So what is a digital footprint? A digital footprint is a trail of data you create while using the internet. It also includes the websites you visit, the emails you sent, and the information you submit to online services. Your digital reputation is directly related to the digital footprint you leave behind. What this means is that depending on what you're Google searching, what you're posting online, what you're sharing on Facebook or any other social media is something that can always get looked back on. So you really want to be careful and be responsible about the things that you are publishing and searching. So the digital footprint, what social media are your students on? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. What are they viewing online? What are they posting? Who are they communicating with online? Which is one of the most important things to really ask yourself about your students. Again, your digital reputation is directly related to the digital footprint you leave behind. And this is really important because a good note um, that or advice that we're giving to all of our parents is that a lot of universities and colleges are now looking into digital footprints to see what type of students they're going to be allowing into their campuses. And even jobs now are also looking into digital footprints to see the type of employees they're going to hire in their companies. So this is just something to also just keep in mind as to why we're asking you to a monitor the uh, social um websites that your students are using or even yourselves right or even what they're posting and who they're talking to because now things are easily accessible and we're now able to get a bigger picture of students who are trying to apply to colleges or even employees trying to apply to jobs mm -hmm. and it's only going to become a bigger more important part of our um day to day because technology is so huge and it's just the direction society is headed all right, so things to look for. We're going to watch this video from Teen Voices and Common Sense Media with where students say about experiences. Um, you know, posting and having a lot of people see it can definitely be kind of scary. You know, if you're a teenager, you're going to make bad decisions sometimes. They can screenshot it. They can do so many things to save that, and they can edit it in ways that you won't want them to. Whether or not you think it'll go away, it's there. Anything you post online, you're stuck with. Oversharing to me is putting too much of your personal life in front of a, a wide audience of people. Posting something for the sake of showing that you're there and maybe not because you're actually having that great of a time. Posting about things that people don't necessarily think are significant, but they're just kind of posting to be posting. What you share and how often you share is going to affect the way that somebody views you. Just because I'm going to post all the time, that doesn't mean that you're going to get all the attention. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to like you. For example, people have like Finstas where they, or spam accounts where they just like post random stuff and sometimes they get too personal with what, uh, with what they're talking about on there. Things that are meant to be texted one to one, people tend to post online so 50 other people can see their plans for tomorrow or the next weekend. You could be doing something like that could potentially endanger yourself by making your account public and saying too much about where you live or who you are. When I'm in like a cool location and I want to show everybody where I am, but most of the time I'll just tag 
where I am on like a Snapchat story so people can know. So once you put something online, it can be there forever because people might take screenshots, they might record it, they might save it. I don't think I don't think people don't realize that it's gonna be there forever. I think they just don't care. A lot of people have this mentality of like what I'm doing is very insignificant. Why is anyone gonna care about this? You should be cautious of what you post. You don't post your pictures and think like, okay. Nobody, nobody's seeing me, nobody screenshotting me, nobody doing nothing because people doing that, you just not gonna know. Uh, your Snapchats, despite the fact that they only last, I don't know, four to eight seconds, they're still there. Your Instagram stories that go away after 24 hours, they're still there. Anything that is posted, anything that's up, no matter what happens, even if you leave it up for a minute and take it down, it's there as, as soon as you put it up there. No one's going to scrutinize everything that you say the same way that you might. You are not obliged to post every second of your life in order to please um, what you might seem as the majority of people. So when you feel like you have to post all the time, when you feel like you have to do this in order to get fame and attention, you don't. It's not your job. That's something you always have to be thinking about. Um, what do you want people to remember you on social media as? So just think about the digital footprints that you're leaving behind. And these are just great questions, like we mentioned before, for you to think about now and into your future, because like it was mentioned in the video, you may not think that is it is important because it's not happening to you. But at, on the other end of that thought, there's people who are doing things like screenshotting conversations or posting things that you don't even know. So it's a great way to just think about your own safety because you know you may from just a small little bit of information people can figure out where you live yes right they can figure out your phone number and they can figure out personal information it's really accessible through the internet mm -hmm. so it's really um just food for thought to just make sure that we are aware of our own safety and just the digital footprints that we are leaving behind all right so digital citizenship ask yourself what is one thing you can do now to understand and support your students digital footprint yourself what is one thing that you can do now to un understand and support your students digital footprint the first thing to really consider is that we want to be models for our students so we don't want them to do something we have to make sure that we're posting clean that we're searching clean that we're being responsible about what we show in public which is social media right and at the end of the day these are just suggestions like you don't have to follow what we're letting you know but from our point of view and just our own experiences we know how detrimental a lot of the footprints can be for just your successes in the future um so those are just things that we just want to suggest and advise just because a lot of the times the knowledge is not there and sometimes we just don't understand what it means to be posting or how accessible things are and how detrimental it can be to your footprint and your citizenship because a lot of things once they're up they're very hard to remove yes okay so digital footprint and how we interact what social media are your students on again instagram twitter facebook snapchat TikTok. all of these um apps are now very very popular and kids sometimes don't even know who they are talking to you know there are students who just add people to add them and don't really they could be telling them oh i'm 13 and you never know exactly who they are they could be talking to a predator or something and really not be aware of it so that is something to really be careful about so social media and online interactions, we're about to see some of the negative effects that just a simple conversation or just simple day-to-day -day, um, uses that we do that we don't realize can have just a bigger impact and a bigger consequences to yeah. just our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, and just even like, oh, if I post something and I wrote it a certain way, 
somebody can read it differently depending mm -hmm. on how they look at it and their point of view. And that can honestly, even if you didn't mean to, turn into something like cyberbullying, which has become so serious in this day and age. So we're going to go ahead and hear some from Teen Versus. Mm -hmm. People fight over text all the time. You know, digital drama is a thing. There are ways to avoid digital drama, but I think it's in a, it's mainly inevitable. You need to like get ready to like have something be said that maybe maybe you won't like. On social media, you know, everything social wise gets a bit more intense. It just causes so much unnecessary drama. I would say sometimes I need to take a break from it because sometimes it's too much for me. And then if there's like drama going on, I'll set it aside. And even though there are steps that we can take to reduce it, it's not gonna end. You can say anything over text, which you would never actually say in real life. It's so much easier to fight with your friend over the phone than it is to fight with your friend in person. That's a new thing. People can just hide behind, you know, certain accounts and certain places on social media and just say whatever they want to say. We kind of have this disconnect that I think sometimes social media can cause where it develops like a almost a tolerance for a lack of empathy. It's really important to think about how other people are going to take it because whatever comment you make can be seen by potentially thousands or millions of people now more than ever where somebody makes a rude comment and they get put on blast for it. You don't see the other person's reactions, so you just keep on going. You don't know if the person is sad. You don't know if they're angry. You don't know what they're thinking about you. Social media can be, you can turn into sort of a negative space when there's a lot of like anonymous posting. No one else knows who that person is, so it creates a lot of like tension and drama within friend groups. In the comment sections of posts that, you know, are viral or popular, I'll see someone voicing their opinion and all of a sudden there'll be a thread of even hundreds of comments, people just arguing and arguing and not even knowing each other. You could get insulted very easily, like, on your appearance, on your, like, just anything that you say, anything that you put out onto the internet. Something so small can escalate to something so big, and as it escalates, the topic can completely change to something that's really big. People that I know actually worry about how many followers they have compared to other people, if they're not getting as many messages. When I see like the people around me getting into drama on social media, it kind of makes me not want to be on social media. It just seems easier to not be a part of that. I have a couple of friends who are very close, but they fight a lot. I'll get screenshots of their conversation from both of the people just being upset and saying, long paragraphs about how upset they are, and instead of talking to each other about it in person, as I've suggested both of them multiple times. I would say I'm more comfortable talking face-to-face -face because, like, on social media, it's hard to, like, communicate, like, a sense of realness and, like, emotions. The best way to deal with digital drama is to leave what's happening. Maybe it's a group chat that you're in, just to leave that. Because the more that people talk about it, the more that people are going to think about it, and the more you might get into it and you might say more things. It is really easy, easy to get your feelings hurt, but you know, you just gotta like, it's just kind of, they're just hiding behind a screen basically. I think the best way to deal with digital drama and help mediate it is first of all, I always suggest talking in person because that's always easier. Avoiding confrontation is something that I'm trying to be aware that I don't do. A way that I can just disassociate myself from the negativity is to just not respond. So how do you deal with digital drama? So just a, key, a few key points to point out from this video is that um, there's this one class I took one time, it's called the anatomy of peace. It's so much easier to treat someone a lot meaner because you're doing it through technology because you forget that on the other side, there's a human being. So because it's through text messages, we tend to treat people like objects. And this is why digital, digital drama happens, right? Because you're more comfortable saying a lot more mean things to someone who you cannot see 
than when you're doing it online, right? And that's why we have a rise in cyberbullying, digital bullying, and just bullying in general. A lot of the cases when it comes to bullying do stem from an under, a misunderstanding from either a text, from either a screenshot, not all of the information was shared. And, you know, a lot of the com consequences are just, we jump to conclusions and we just, we just make poor choices. So one of the questions, you know, very important questions that you must think about is how do you handle drama, especially digital drama? And especially with your students, because uh, sometimes students don't have open communication or they think it's something that, something that they can deal with themselves when, when in fact it's better to bring it out in the open, you know, so that you can talk it through and try to figure out a solution for it because you can go down a rabbit hole real quick when some negativity comes into your life, you know, and you really want to be able to help your kids not fall into that. So what is one thing that you can do to check on your students' online interactions? Um, like I mentioned, having the open interaction, sometimes kids won't be honest about having social media, but we need to say like, hey, you know, you have to be very careful with who you're talking to or the way that you're talking to people because you don't know how other people react. Some people are more sensitive than others. And what most don't think about is how would I feel if somebody told me something negative? So what is one thing you can do to check on your students' online interactions? Um, the first thing that we recommend is just to have open communication as much as possible because, you know, it's tough at this age to really have good communication with students, but we still have to try because we never know what our students are up to online because we can't be hovering over them all day, every day, you know? Like we, we could be at work or at school ourselves and we just have to be able to build that trust with students to know that they are being responsible using technology. And the great thing about communication is that you, it doesn't have to be a big thing. Just ask them, hey, can I see like things that you post on your social media? And then if like the answer is no, <laughs> why? Just saying, that's how you really need to look, okay? <laughs> I'm oh, just kidding now. So uh, just, start with, just start with the communication. I think that would be important. Um, there's just signs that tell you if kids, you know, are having positive, you know, interactions online or negative interactions online, right? Mm -hmm. So like I said, like my co-host, my co-partner said, it all starts with a communication. And I think that is the biggest advice that we can just uh, – you know, give to all of you. The second thing would be just to, if you can, you know, check their social medias, um, see what is going on, what's happening. But I would even say one before that is the knowledge of knowing and passing on that information of what citizen, digital citizenship and why it's so important and the consequences that it can have on your life long term yes. and i think even before you're maybe checking into social medias or even the communicating piece maybe the communication can start with hey do you know that if you post things online these are the things that consequently can happen and i think that is all that we can advise because from the knowledge it will open communications and then from those communications hopefully you can have a meaningful conversation about just your students digital citizenship and their digital footprints yeah so um we also want to be careful and check out for signs with our students um to make sure they are not cyber bullying or being cyber bullied because these days it has become a very big issue that has even led people to take their lives with something so insensitive as like a dumb comment or something like we never know who's taking what to heart and how bad they're going to take it themselves because we don't know what someone's living. Someone can present something completely different on their social media than what they are actually experiencing. So we can't make assumptions about stuff like that. And we really want to be careful with it now that we have more knowledge about it. Um, we just want to help spread it with parents, with students and just teach them what the digital footprint is, digital citizenship, 
being responsible and respectful and not doing anything to somebody else that you wouldn't want done to yourself. So with that, we have reached the end of our macho video and we ask you very nicely, please, to send us a text message or an email to either 323-388-3267 or emmsschooltohome at gmail.com with your name, your student's name, and the name of this module, Module 5 Digital Citizenship, so that we know that you have finished it and we can give you credit for it. So an example is, if my child is Victoria Ayala, <laughs> I would be like, hi, my name is Raquel Martinez. My student is Victoria Ayala. The name of the module is Module 5 Digital Citizenship. <laughs> and that is it. And that's um, how we keep track of the parents that are doing our trainings and are just following us through this journey of distance learning and navigating through our resources online. Yes. And we also... Um, recommend or wanted to let you know you can contact us at any time to these two contacts to the email and the phone number at any time and we will get back to you as fast as we can um, as soon as possible and also if you are on social media you can check out our social media which is at new markham everything is new markham yes. so you can facebook twitter instagram New Markham. Yep. And all of our videos are also on YouTube. So you can search New Markham and you can find everything that we have published so far. All right. Have well, a good thank one. you so much for joining us.